So this is a demo of a rotor reflectometer test using the 3 series MDO. Rotor reflectometer is over here. I've actually got that wired into a demonstration delay line at the moment and the output of the reflectometer is wired back to channel 1, channel 2 of the scope. This is a single channel rotor reflectometer so I have both double transit traces coming back on channel 1 and then a single transit trace on channel 2. The more modern reflectometers actually have dual channel output so I would be using three channels in that case because the double transit signal will be split across two channels. Um, so we'll turn on the reflectometer, start the scope up and there's the double transit trace. I'll just bring him down a little bit. So that's both traces being in there. I can see both traces because if I hit the split button there on the reflectometer you can see the trace bouncing around. If I bring on the persistence on the screen I'm going auto and then there you can see both traces there and that's showing no fault on the reflectometer. Uh, so we will turn on channel 2 and that's the single transit pulse there, bring him up, so they're in line together. So if I want to make some measurements I can bring on cursors and I can bring them in manually. My first measurement will be on channel A uh, and I'll push it again to get fine. So that's the single transit pulse there. That's to about 8.262. And if I wanted to get bring that one back, I can bring the other cursor into play and I can measure double transit pulse which will be close to 17.9 so that's close to twice it should be around about twice the single transit pulse there I can turn channel 2 off okay so the other way of displaying that two traces are present uh, is to use the reference channel so if I file and I save as I save channel 1 as an ISF file, 002, I can then recall that one and bring him up and then bring him, recall him to channel 1 there and there he is there and then if I move him slightly you can see that both the traces are there. What I can do with this scope is do maths. Uh, so if I have maths, I can then set up math and I can do math on the actual reference channel and one of the actual input channels as well and just subtract them. So I'll get the differential between the waveforms. I'll move him down a bit. So he's So a straight line graph will tell me that there's no defects there. If I put a defect into the delay line, you can see that in actual fact I'll take off reference channel and there you can see there's a double deflection in there. If I wanted to do the maths for this, I would have to re-save one of the channels as a uh, reference waveform 3 and then recall that back into the reference recall and then I could put my math channel back in and send him down to zero there and you can see there that's the analysis done on the reflectometer um, because uh, the waveforms are constantly changing, you do sometimes uh, yeah, don't always pick up uh, the deflection in the waveforms. But if I now wanted to find out where that fault was, I can bring my cursors back on 
I don't need cursor B, you can go off and I can bring cursor A to the point where I believe which is about there. So I believe the fault starts at 5.462 microseconds on the measurement and then I could actually have some formulas that would tell me if this was on a, a real rotor that would be able to tell with that how far down the rotor the fault started. So that's the test completed, works quite well on this oscilloscope gained mostly by the sheer size of this screen it lets you visually see the waveforms very very easily.